John A. Boehner, 53rd Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Well, I could say it's good to be here, but <laughs> I'm glad I'm here for Speaker Pelosi. Uh, Madam Speaker, Paul, uh, it's a privilege to, to be with you and your family this afternoon uh, for the unveiling of this portrait uh, as you bring to a close an historic run uh, as leader of this institution that we love and served. Uh, Debbie and I offer our most sincere congratulations. Uh, today uh, is about you, Speaker Pelosi, uh, certainly not about me. Uh, but it'd be wrong for me not to uh, note the passing just days ago of uh, Mr. Ron Schur, uh, the exceptionally talented and generous artist who painted my own portrait, uh, which uh, was unveiled three years ago and now hangs in the speaker's lobby. Uh, he also happened to paint the portrait we're going to see in a few minutes. Uh, may he rest in peace and may his family find peace in this holiday season. Uh, Madam Speaker, you and I have uh, disagreed uh, politically on many things over the years, but we were never disagreeable to each other. As you might have heard me say before, you can disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, you've been unfailingly uh, gracious, gracious to me, to my family, and uh, frankly, my team here in Washington. And, Madam Speaker, I have to say, my girls told me, tell the Speaker, admire her. <laughs> so I couldn't tell my girls are Democrats. You were so gracious to me, in fact, that uh, at times it got me in trouble with my own members. <laughs> in 2011, when, uh, uh, when I became Speaker and you handed me the gavel in the House chamber, I decided, uh, why not? I'm going to give you a big kiss. Well, two things happened. First, the Speaker, like, backed away, <laughs> and I thought to myself, as if there's nobody watching, I can't let her rebuff me, so I kind of moved in and made sure I <laughs> planted that kiss on her, right? Well, let me tell you, I heard about it for months. No, actually, I heard about it for years. Uh, you've been incredibly effective as the leader of your caucus. You know, the younger generation today has a saying, game recognizes game. And the fact of the matter is, no other Speaker of the House in the modern era, era Republican or Democrat, uh, <laughs> uh, has wielded, wielded the gavel with such a th results. Let me just say, you're one tough cookie. You know, I can tell. Uh, I could tell a few stories here. Uh, my old friend, the late, great John Dingell, certainly could. And if you read my book, you know the rest of that story. But there's another side of you, Madam Speaker, as well. As leader of the other party uh, opposite you during many of uh, your years in leadership, I occasionally got to see and experience something few others get to see. Uh, and that was your grace when the, the cameras were off and when the moment called for us to rise above politics and stand together as colleagues to do what was in the interest of the House and, frankly, what was in the interest of the country. I was witness to this on multiple occasions, from war funding to the economy and certainly to the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, you've been a fierce warrior for your party, but when the stakes were highest, you were willing to put the interest of the nation first and take the heat for it. Now that's leadership. Leaders lead, Madam Speaker, 
and you, Madam Speaker, have led. I'm honored to be here today as a longtime colleague and a fellow American to say thank you for that. Thank you all.